they reveal their uh, understanding and realization. At that time, they play the role of guru or teacher in this world. And sometimes, like uh, Dr. Treya, when he was silent, his quality is all hidden inside. So Dr. Treya, he learned this from fire. Now we're coming to yes, sun. Moon. Sun. Moon. 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 The moon. Dr. Treya Maharaj, he said, from the moon, I have learned about the nature of the soul. When we look at the moon, one day it's a new moon, very thin. Then it becomes wider, wider, becomes half moon. Gradually, over 16 days, it becomes a full moon. So the moon is waxing and the moon is waning. It seems to be growing and disappearing. But actually, the moon is always the same. This is only our vision. So in the same way, every atma, every soul, is the same and transcendental. But by our material understanding, we think this person is growing and uh, diminishing again. So I have learned about the nature of the soul from the moon. Then Dr. Trey said, the sun is also my guru. Why? Because the sun is like a sadhu. The sun is in the sky. And from the heat of the sun, it evaporates water from oceans and lakes and accepts that and then later sends it back in the form of rain. So a sadhu, how is a sadhu? Like Srila Gurudev. Many, many devotees come. Many people give so many pranami, donations. But Gurudev, he has nothing for himself. Only at the appropriate time, like the sun, he accepts this and then gives everything back. How? By making very wonderful mandir in Govardhan, in Navadhip Dham, very soon in Jagannath Puri Dham, and so on. So because the sun never ex accepts anything for itself, but takes from everywhere and gives back at the appropriate time. So Dr. Treya said, I have learned this quality of the sadhu from the sun. Kapoor. Pigeon. Then he said, my next guru is the pigeon. He narrated a story. Once there was a male pigeon and moving here and there, as destiny would have it, he met with a female pigeon. And they became very much in love with each other. They like to see each other's smiling faces and they have so many things in common. So they entered into a relationship. And whatever desires the female pigeon had, the male pigeon, even though it was, he had to undergo so many difficulties, he was happy to fulfill all of those desires. And before long, some eggs were born <laughs> and they gradually hatched and some uh, baby pigeons, some chicks were born, and the two of them, they're very happy and absorbed in their life together with their chicks. So one day, both of them, they went out to collect food for their chicks, but a hunter came. And the hunter came and snared their chicks in a net. So when the female bird saw this, without thinking, without considering the circumstances, at once she flew directly there, again into the trap of the hunter. And the male bird, he was lamenting. How can I live without my chicks? How can I live without my wife? And he was lamenting, and as he was lamenting, the hunter also caught him. So Dr. Treya, he said, by watching this, I have learned a very good lesson. The lesson is, when a living entity takes birth as a human being, after 8,400,000 species of life, many, many births. But when that soul takes birth in the human body, at this moment, the doors of liberation from the cycle of birth and death, they are wide open. He can walk out. But if that person is bewildered by excessive affection for family members, then what will happen? His opportunity to escape comes, but he missed it completely. Just like there's one story once there was a, a blind man, and he was going begging door to door, Radhe Radhe, give me a donation, give me a donation. And he would accept the donation and then continue walking. So one day he came to a door and there was no answer, so he went inside. He was saying, give me a donation, but no one would answer. So he turned around to walk out, but he walked into a wall. So he put his hand on the wall, he said, where's the door, where's the door? 
He was blind, he did not know, he'd walked, walked into a stadium, a very big building, big round building, and keeping his hand on the wall, he was walking and thinking, I'll come to the door any minute now. Hmm? And walking and walking, touching the side of the wall. And he was going for a very, very long time, all the way around the stadium. And then just when he came to the door, the way out, as he got there, he scratched his head, where's that door? I've been walking for a long time, and put his hand back on the wall, the other side. Huh? And around, he went again. So, yes, it's funny, isn't it? No, it's not, actually. Because, just like the soul, he's wandering round and round through millions of lifetimes, so many births. And then, what happens? He takes birth in the human form. Now he came to the door. If he will utilize his independence properly, he will come out of the endless chain of birth and death. But what happens? Some itching and scratching, and that opportunity is missed, and again, the soul moves around. And so, uh, here, Dr. Treya is saying that by excessive attachment for one's family members and society... Excessive what? Or affection. Any little affection even, mm -hmm. it will increase more and more. Mm -hmm. So don't attach at all. <laughs> so, and you should know, as you are telling, life is very human, life very, very rare. Hmm? And he was moving in the stadium. 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 When door came, he began to do. <laughs> so, this story is not to tell others, but also to apply, apply on us. As he is telling, as Dattrate Prabhu, I am following that. I have no wife, no children, no relatives, nothing. And so I am very happy. <laughs> Hmm. Then, Ajagara. Thank you. <coughs> Don't be C pigeon and? Oh, call is here. Time. 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 That is death. Oh, what? Dancing on the head. Huh? And at any time he will come and he will swallow you. So be always careful. Don't lose a moment to be attached in these worldly things. Not anyone. Whole attachment should be in the lotus seat of Guru and Krishna. If you are attaching to Gurudev, Gurudev, Kindly take that attachment and will give in the lotus feet of Radha and Krishna. Go. So first of all, I offer my obeisances to Sri Gurudev, present sannyasis, Vaishnavas, Vaishnavis. So continuing the instru invaluable instructions of Sri Dattatraya to Maharaj Yadu. So the next guru, he said, I have a guru, his name is Ajagra. No? Python. Python never moves anywhere, only he stays in one place and all food enters his mouth. Just like Sri Prahlad Maharaj, on his travels afterwards, he met one yogi who was very fat so, and naked, lying on the dust. And Prahlad Maharaj was astonished, Maharaj, you seem to do no activity, no work whatsoever, but you are very fat. And he said, yes, I follow the philosophy of the python. I know that happiness and distress are predestined according to our previous activities. They were just like, no one ever makes a plan how I can suffer today, how I can fall off a bridge, how I can break my leg. No one makes a plan how to suffer, but suffering comes automatically. In the same way, why I should endeavor very much for material happiness, because my material happiness will also come by its own accord, according to my past activities. Therefore, I neither try to remove distress or to achieve happiness. I stay in one place and it comes automatically. 
Therefore, from that philosophy of non-movement, non-activity, non-endeavor, I learned that from the Python. Then the next guru, the five next five gurus deal with controlling our five senses of sight, smell, taste, touch, and hearing. So another guru is the ocean, because even though in the drought seasons, when the rivers are very small, the ocean nearly becomes bigger, nor in the flood seasons. From Ajagar, hmm. Python, we can learn whatever is coming easily, easily by that we should maintain our, maintain our, life. our life. If one day, two days, three days, even not coming anything, oh, they should tolerate this, not be violent or anything. So we should be like python. that python. <coughs> in the ocean, in the dry season, he does not shrink and become diminished, nor in the rainy season does he become very swollen. There that sometimes the sadhu gets a lot and he is not disturbed, he does not become excessively materially enthusiastic. No, when there is a shortage, does he become diminished? Just like Sri Gurudev, everyone always says, 50 years ago when he had nothing, he is the same as he is now. Therefore, even though the whole world may leave him tomorrow, he will be unchanged, not like us. So the next five gurus deal with the five senses. For example, one of the gurus is the moth. Because the moth, his weakness is he cannot control his sense of huh. sight. So what do you learn from Sindhu? Ocean means we should not be disturbed if so much comes or so much goes. No. Ocean is always the same. Uh, tsunami waves, then tsunami waves come, then we become very friendly. Yeah. Ocean never changes. Some small mm. ocean is not disturbed. If so much coming, wealth and reputation and position and so many things. Oh, nothing to. And if so much uh, suffering comings. All are abusing you, beating you even, like Tridandi. Tridandi Bhikshu. Bhikshu. You should tolerate. Hmm? Then you will be happy and peaceful. Then. So just like a materialistic man or woman, when Bhagavatam says a woman, when she is nicely dressed in sari and ornaments and makeup and lipstick, then a foolish man becomes very excited and he rushes towards her like a moth enters a flame then the moth gives up his existence. Therefore, from the moth I learned, if one does not control one's sense of sight, then he will lose everything. Another guru is the foolish deer. The deer... Oh, here? Patanga, you are told? Patanga. Moth, moth. Moth, moth. And then Madhukrita? Madhukrita, the, the bee. The bee's weakness is no, drinking honey and oh. collecting no, honey. I, I, I'm doing another one. <laughs> <laughs> First is Can you? Oh, the bee, he runs oh. around all summer collecting. Oh. Give chance to him. <laughs> So, so many gurus can be seen within this world. If anyone is trying to go on the path of liberation from this material world, then they will have to also use their intelligence. And they will try to have to observe this material world as this Dattatreya Rishi was describing how so many aspects of this world gave him inspiration toward the path of liberation. How he should live within this world. How he should avoid certain in allurements and enticements so that this rare human form of life 
will not be lost. The opportunity will not be lost. So now he goes on to explain about the honeybee. It says, just as a honeybee takes nectar from all flowers, big and small, an intelligent human being should take the essence from all religious scriptures. And a saintly person should accept only enough food to keep his body and soul together. He should go from door to door accepting just a little bit of food from each family. Thus he should practice the occupation of the honeybee. So in India, they have a system called Madhu Kari. And this is the ancient system by which sages would maintain their existence. Those who were renunciates, those who were sannyasis, they would not acquire any kind of property, they would not be attached to any kind of possessions, and even for their very maintenance of their body and for acquiring foodstuffs, they would simply live by going door to door and begging. Of course, in the modern day, in Kali Yuga, there are so many laws of the Western civilization and such, it is more difficult to do. But in Vedic times, all the householders, they would be trained that if any person comes to their door and is begging, oh, it is a great opportunity for them. Here is a saintly person who is coming. <clears throat> they understand that this saintly person should be honored and served just as if he is Atiti Bhagavan. That means the Lord himself, God himself coming to my door. Now I have an opportunity to serve the personality of Godhead in the form of this guest. So the saintly persons would go from door to door. They would stay only a very short period of time. It was described that Sri Shukadeva Goswami was like this also. All the great sages, they would come to a householder's home. Only long enough, they would stay just long enough for them to milk a cow. Why? Because very short time, they would accept a little bit of donation of milk from the cow to maintain their bodies, but what would they give in exchange? While they were there, in that place, they would distribute transcendental knowledge into the hearts of the householders. And by their very presence, by their very example, they would show detachment from this world. So, a saintly person should maintain his existence without attachment, without accumulating. Uh, just as the honeybee goes from flower to flower to flower, and takes a little bit from here and there. So the saintly person should be like this. And also in relation to the Vedic Shastras, to the scriptures, transcendental knowledge, he should understand, just like the honeybee is taking the essence from a flower, uh, the pollen from the flower. So similarly, the saintly person, he should understand the real meaning, the true meaning and deep meaning of all Shastras. He should not be, become captivated by some of the uh, pushpavachya, the flowery words of the Vedas, which are sometimes there to encourage less intelligent persons to perform Vedic ritualistic activities for elevation to heavenly planets and such in next lifetime for higher states of material enjoyment, but rather he should take the essence of all Shastras, which is pure devotion, pure bhakti, to the lotus feet of Bhagavan. Mm -hmm. Then elephant. Yes. Elephant. Yes, yes. <laughs> so, then the next guru is the elephant. <laughs> so, a saintly, a saintly person should never touch a young girl. In fact, he should not even let his foot touch a wooden doll in the shape of a, of a woman. By bodily contact with a woman, he will surely be captured by illusion. Just as the elephant is captured by the she-elephant due to his desire to touch her body. You know how? Yes. Oh. Tell them. Yeah. So, we should be very careful, very careful. So, vice versa, not for only Omens. Yeah. In India they have so many elephants and there is a method for capturing a male elephant. In forest. In the forest, in the jungle. Uh, the male elephant is roaming here and there in the jungle. Very, very difficult to capture him. But because the male elephant is very much attached to the female elephant, the male elephant becomes attached to the female elephant 
by dint of the desire to touch her. So what they do is they take a female elephant who has already been captured, already trained, and what they do is they train her to go in behind a pit that they dig in the earth, a very big, dark, deep hole. And covered with? And covered with grass so that it cannot be seen. So the female elephant is going in front of the male elephant. Male elephant sees her and is attracted and wants to touch her. So what happens is the female elephant is trained to lead the male elephant and she goes just around this hole. But what happens to the male elephant? He doesn't see because it's covered by grass and he falls down into the hole. And once he is down in the hole, now what do they do? They don't feed him. They don't for give so him many food. Did. For so many days. For did. many, many days, gradually, gradually, the male elephant becomes weaker and weaker and weaker. He has no strength left practically. And now they use the, sh the female elephant to pull the male elephant out of the hole, and now he's completely captured. Ah. Yes. They get a iron chain oh. to sea elephant, and she goes, <laughs> and then she and ties the chain around his neck, neck and, then <laughs> and pulls him out of the hole. Is that so. like a wedding ring? No. <laughs> this is the wedding ring given by the female elephant to the male elephant. Don't laugh, but take the essence of this story. Don't be male elephant. They raised from babyhood. Oh. Any more? Oh, Next. thank you. Oh. Twinkle, twinkle. Should we call what name? Yes. Narhari? Yes, he has prepared for Bumblebee. Narhari <laughs> Prabhu. Bumblebee? Oh, you should come. Oh, go on.
should be ready for drama play and one kirtan Hare Krishna some special request to Srila Gurudev Mahi Bharat Prabhu and his family and so many devotees from New Braj and other places Sri Dhan Prabhu all the boys are going to perform the beautiful drama play of Prahlad Maharaj and the pastimes with Lord Nasingadev. So for the pleasure of Srila Gurudev and all the of our Chidandi Sanyas gone, all the Vaishnavas, Vaishnavis and all of our honored guests will perform this drama play, please. Forgive any mistakes and we're completely at your mercy. Thank you. Hare Krishna. The Supreme Personality of Godhead, in his original threefold bending form of Krishna, or Shama Sundara, eternally engages in loving pastimes with his most intimate associates. Krishna also presides over the Vaikuntha planets, but not in his original form. He expands himself into his four-on form known as Narayan or Vishnu. In this way, he presides over all the Vaikuntha planets. Once, on one of these blissful Vaikuntha planets, two gatekeepers of Lord Narayan, known as Jai and Vijay, were pondering how they could better serve the Lord. Sometimes the Lord tra Sometimes the Lord <laughs> Brother, this is very interesting what you're saying. Please tell me. Sometimes the Lord wants to fight. But who can fight with the Lord? Only a qualified devotee of the Lord can. We need to go to the material world to serve the Lord as demons. Our Vaikuntha bodies are spiritual. Once you are here, you cannot fall down. 
Lord Vishnu travels to the material world by Yoga Maya, perhaps she will arrange for us to serve in this way. We know the Lord wants to fight. Hmm. Yes, we know, but we can't just act as demons. We must become demons. Yes, yes. <laughs> But, but how can we serve the Lord in this way? <laughs> the sons of Brahma, who are known as the four Kumaras, came to visit Lord Narayan, the personality of Godhead, in Vaikuntha. The Kumaras are great sages who are always traveling together throughout the universes. Although many thousands of years old, they appear as small boys of about five or six. One day, the four Kumars came to pay their respects to Lord Narayan in his beautiful palace of Touchstone. Please allow us to enter the palace. We wish to see Lord Narayan. Stop! Not just anyone can enter the palace of Lord Narayan. Only those with the proper qualifications and purity. My dear boys, great sages and saints, perform austerities for thousands of years just to catch a glimpse of the feet of Lord Narayan. You boys couldn't have possibly qualified properly by performing austerities. You boys should go home now. Yes, go home and come back in a few thousand years. <laughs> the guards. Justice, we curse you both take birth in the material world of birth and death. The gods, seeing only four young boys and not knowing their true identities, refused their entrance. The boys became so angry and thus they cursed the gods. For this injustice. Immediately they were sent down, down, through the eight layers of material covering. Down, down, through false ego, intelligence, mind. Down they went, plummeting, hurtling through ether, air, fire, water, and earth, until they reached this material universe. It is night, wind is howling, and from the sky torrents of blood and pus are falling. The whole planet is shaking and tremors are causing the ground to crack open. This night, a terrible demon is being born, and this is causing severe disturbances throughout the universe. His name is Aranya Kashipu. From his very birth, Aranya Kashipu was a great demon who wanted more material wealth and power than anyone else. For 100 years and 25 more, he performed severe austerities by standing on the tips of his toes. He became more and more powerful until it looked as if he would destroy the entire universe. Finally, the demons pleased Lord Brahma, who came down to earth to stop him from creating further destructions. Son of Kashyapa Muni. Please get up, please get up. I have been very much astonished to see your endurance in spite of being eaten and bitten by all kinds of worms and ants. You are keeping your life air circulated within your bones. Certainly, this is wonderful. Even saintly persons, such as Brigu, born previously, could not perform such severe austerities, nor will anyone in the future be able to do so. Who within these three worlds can sustain his life without drinking one drop of water for 100 celestial years? You are now perfect in the performance of your austerities, and therefore, you may ask from me whatever you desire, and I shall try to fulfill your wish. 
I offer my obeisances to the original personality within this universe, Lord Brahma, who is cognizant and who can apply his mind and realized intelligence in creating this cosmic manifestation. You are the Supreme Lord. You are the Super Soul. You are beginningless, endless, and omniscient, beyond the limits of time and space. O oh, my Lord, O oh, best of the givers of benedictions, if you will kindly grant me the benediction I desire, please grant me that I will never meet death from any of the living entities created by you. Tatashtu. Then grant me this, that I may never be killed during the day or during the night. Granted. Then grant me this, that I may never be killed during the day or during the night. Yes, that's all right. Then grant me this, then I may never be killed inside or outside. Ashurant. Then grant me this, that I may never be killed by any weapon. Yes, I comply. And grant me this, that I may never be killed by a man or a beast. Tatashtu. And give me soul leadership over all living entities and presiding deities. And give me all the glories obtained by that position. Furthermore, give me all the mystic powers obtained by long austerities and the practices of yoga. For these cannot be lost at any time. Oh my son, these benedictions you have asked from me are difficult to attain for most men. Nonetheless, oh my son, I shall grant them to you, although they are generally not available. Now I am immortal! I am immortal! Death! Close your I Hiranya Kashipu am free. And now, everyone, you will worship me. You will worship me. <laughs> <laughs> Hiranya Kashipu became the conqueror of the entire universe. Indeed, that great demon conquered all the planets in the three worlds, upper, middle, and lower. Meanwhile, the demigods became overwhelmed with fear, for Haranyakashipu's power was spreading rapidly throughout the universe, endangering the residents of the heavenly planets. So they kidnapped his pregnant wife, Kayadu. They were planning to execute her child, believing that he was greater than even that of Aranya Kashipu. Hey, Come with me. Just then, Narada Muni entered, playing as he vina and singing the Hare Krishna. be dragging her in this way. This woman is the wife of another. You should immediately release her. Oh, Narada Muni, please accept my humble obeisances. This chaste lady here carries within her womb a snake, the son of Hiranya Kashipu. If he's allowed to be born, he might destroy the entire universe. No, no. 
my dear demigod, this chaste lady is carrying within her womb a great devotee of the supreme personality of Godhead, Lord Sri Krishna. Even if you wanted to, you could not harm him. His name is Prahlad Maharaj. My dear child, come with me to my ashram where you will be safe until your husband is finished with his austerities. Although Pallad Maharaj was born in a family of Asuras, he himself was not an Asura, but a great devotee of Lord Vishnu. Unlike the Asuras, he was never envious of Vaishnavas. He was not agitated but put into danger, and he was neither directly nor indirectly interested in the fruit of activities described in the Vedas. Indeed, he saw everything in relation to Krishna and therefore he was completely devoid of all material desires. God, bring me my wine. Prahlad, Prahlad, you are my favorite son, so I want the best for you. Yes, my son, you will inherit all my wealth and power, which is unmatched in the whole universe. I want that you should get the best education. You should learn the arts of attaining huge quantities of gold. <laughs> what to speak of that lustful art of attracting even the most beautiful women? <laughs> well, perhaps you are a little too young for such talk. But heed me, Prahlad, you will be successful, just like your father, Viranya Kashipu. So, my dear son, what is the best subject you have learned from your teachers? Tatsadumanye asuravarya dehinam sadasamudvigna diyam masadkrahat Hitvatma patam grihadanda kupam vanam gatoya dharma shreta. O best of the Asuras, king of the demons, as far as I have learned from my spiritual master, any person who has accepted this temporary body and a temporary household life has fallen into a very deep and dark well where there is no water but only suffering. One should give up this position and go to the forest and take shelter of Sri Hari. What is this nonsense, Perlot? This is ridiculous. You must not have learned this from your teachers. Now come on and tell me, really, what is the best subject you have learned from your teachers? Sundana Marka, where are you? <laughs> what have you been teaching this boy? Teaching him nothing, Lord. Nothing? Basically, take him back to school and make sure he is protected so that none of the Vaishnavas may come there and spoil his knowledge. Take him now, protect him. 
That's it. Son Pallad, oh, best of your family, all good fortune unto you. These children in our school do not speak in such a deviant way like this. How has your intelligence been spoiled like this? And where have you learned all these instructions? Now we are your teachers, and we want the best for you. You are the best of your family. Now, do not speak lies. Just tell me, has your intelligence been spoiled by you or by our enemies? We're your teachers, Pilat. Now just kindly speak the truth. My dear teachers, let me first offer my respectful obeisance to the Supreme Personality of Godhead, whose external energy, who has created the distinctions of my friend and my enemy, by diluting the intelligence of men. That same Supreme Person who has created this situation has certainly given me the intelligence to take the side of your so-called enemy. Oh, teachers, as iron is attracted by a magnetic stone, my consciousness having been changed by Lord Vishnu, who carries a disc in his hand, is attracted to him and thus I have no independence. Larka, bring me my stick. This Prahlad is spoiling our reputation. He is spoiling our good name and fame. He is appeared. He is like a burning cinder. A burning cinder. Burning in the dynasty of the demons. He has appeared like a thorny tree in a beautiful sandalwood forest. Now we shall teach you. Now, Prahlad, we shall teach you the true paths of religion, economic development, and of course, sense gratification. <laughs> After some time, the teachers thought that Pallad was sufficiently educated in the diplomatic art of pacifying public leaders, appeasing them by giving them lucrative posts, dividing and ruling over them, and punishing them in cases of disobedience. Then, one day, after Pallad's mother had personally washed her boy and dressed him with sufficient ornaments, they presented him before his father. Prahlad, what have you learned from your teachers now? Shravanam, Kirtanam, Vishnu, Smaranam, Padasevanam, Archanam, Bandanam, Dasim, Sakyam, Atma, Nivedanam, Iti Pumsarpita, Vishnu, Bhaktis, Chinnavalakshana, Kriyate, Bhagavad Ganda, Tanmanye, Ditamutamam. Hearing, chanting, Remembering, worshipping, offering prayers, and completely surrendering everything to Lord Vishnu. If a person is completely dedicated his whole life to this, he should be understood as the most exalted person. Sandra Namarka, how dare you pollute my son by teaching him to worship Vishnu? I should have your heads removed. Dear Lord, do not speak to us like that. We are sons of Brahmins. We have not taught your son any of this. 
He's learned it from somewhere else. Where? Go! Leave my sight! For Lord, you rascal. Most fallen of our family. If you have not received this education from your teachers, then where have you gotten it from? Because of their uncontrolled senses, persons too addicted to material life are led, led towards hellish planets. They are repeatedly chewing that which has already been chewed. If a blind man is led by another blind man, then he will miss the path and fall into a ditch. Similarly, if a materially attached man is led by another materially attached man, he will be bound by the ropes of fruit of labor and continue again and again suffering the threefold miseries. You must smear the dust of a pure Vaishnava upon your body. This is the only way to become purified. But you could not know these things. I could not know? Because you are determined to deny Krishna's existence. Even if you studied it, still you could not understand. I could not understand. Because you are too attached to your own Too attached! To know Krishna, you must give everything to Krishna. And then he will reveal himself. Reveal to himself? To me? You run your kashi poo. I don't need this whatever you call it. I am the most powerful man in the universe, Perlard, and don't you ever forget that. We'll see how this, this god of yours protects you. Guards! Where are my guards? Uh, take this boy to my demoniac friends. Then we'll watch. So they took Prahlad into a circle of demons, wild cannibals relishing human flesh. But Prahlad remained fearless, chanting Hare Krishna. And the demons had no power to eat them. Perhaps, perhaps Perlard needs some cooking? Guards, take him to the boiling oil! Yes, we will boil Perlard. Boil! Boil until you're tender enough to eat. What's this? Not boiling in the oil? Perhaps you would like to freeze Perlard? Take him to the freezing cold. <laughs> He's too powerful. Guards, throw him off the cliff. The lad was taken to a small island to endure a huge hurricane. But he kept chanting and was protected by Krishna's holy name. And then he was thrown off a cliff. But he took shelter of Krishna's name, and Krishna caught him in the air. Guards, take him before my fiercest elephant. Then we'll watch. Then we'll see Prahlad squirm. But Krishna was in the elephant's heart and instructed it to lift Prahlad upon its head and raise him from the ground in a triumphant parade. Now Haranyakashipu became furious. Guards! Take him to the pit of snakes. Then we'll see his fortune clear. can see that this boy's strength is unlimited. He has some mystic powers. Yes, Bernard, you have some mystic powers. 
So perhaps you'd like to come and take lunch with your dear father. <laughs> yes, Perlad, come and enjoy with me for a half hour or so. In desperation, Haranyakashipu poisoned Perlad's food with enough poison to kill 100 fully grown men. All right, Perlad, let's have some food. Eat it! Never mind about this god! Just eat! But Pallad first offered his food to Krishna, and it became prasad, as pure as the Lord and freed from all poisonous effects. I can see that this boy's strength is unlimited.